Hello, welcome back, I'm Statman Dave, and today we're going to be taking a look at how Terrell Malassia will fit into Eric Ten Hag's Manchester United by diving into starting 11 formation and tactics that could see the Dutchman thrive at Old Trafford. Remember to subscribe if you're new, smash the like button, but anyway, let's get this party started. After hijacking Leon's deal, Manchester United have signed Tyrell Malassia from Feyenoord for a reported 17 million euros as the Dutchman becomes the first signing of the Eric Ten Hag era. The 22-year-old left back is without doubt a Ten Hag player. Despite being around 5 foot 7, Malassia is fairly physical, especially in duels, which helps him in attack and defence. He's also reasonably quick and a very technical defender. In fact, his technical skills as a whole are very good especially his first touch, close control and wide range of passing. And finally, Malassia is tactically very intelligent and has a great understanding of the game. His impressive skill set sees him operate as an inverted fullback. This is different from an inverted wingback that has a little bit of a less attacking focus. If you are interested, we have got a video on the channel that highlights the difference between the roles, but back to Malassia. Often he takes up very central positions, notably in the midfield area. For Feyenoord, this has worked superbly, and Malassia's tactical intelligence allows him to provide balance to his team's shape. The left back is very much a supporting player, and he does tend to operate from deeper positions, where he can influence the play with his passing range. However, he still makes overlaps when it's needed like a traditional fullback. Like a lot of modern day fullbacks, Malassia shines when he's in possession. He can play pretty much every pass on the pitch and whilst he tends to keep things short or medium length, he can switch the play with long accurate diagonal switches to the other flank. He's also a very difficult player to knock off the ball and dispossess. Whilst he's not very tall, Malassia is surprisingly strong and his height means he's got a very low centre of gravity. This makes it very difficult to unbalance him. What's more, he's got excellent close control, so even if he's out-muscled, he'll still be able to retain control of the ball for long enough to avoid danger. This combination brings a certain confidence to Malassia's game and possession. He's very happy to hold the ball and wait for the right pass. This can bring pressure, but he's not afraid to go backwards and recycle the ball for his team. However, more often than not, Malassia will use his footwork and body feints to shift opponents and create forward passing lanes. He's also able to disguise his passes, making Malassia a very capable ball progressor. In the final third, he's a very unusual fullback. Crossing isn't his strong suit, but he retains an excellent level of passing, and again, this suits the role he plays. His central positioning means he's not always in a suitable position to cross, however he can receive in those Kevin De Bruyne sweet spots in the half space. When he does, he'll be pressured by defenders expecting a cross, but often Malassia responds by faking a cross and slipping a teammate in behind with the through ball. This kind of passing is what you'd expect from Malassia in the final third, as he adds tempo to his side's attack. Notably, he does this with a well-struck pass out wide or a line-breaking pass or through ball like we mentioned earlier. But he also adds thrust with underlapping runs to the byline, often followed by a low cross. Defensively, Tyrell Malassia is a tenacious and dedicated defender. 1v1, he's very good at winning the ball back through tackles and interceptions, nearly four times per 90. Malassia has good defensive technique, highlighted by his body position when in a 1v1. He tends to control the situation by funneling his opponent one way through his position on the pitch whilst orientating himself so he can make the challenge. He's also a very clean tackler with exceptional timing makes him good at making recovery challenges. Despite that, Malassia can improve defensively. I've seen him lose concentration when the ball is on the other flank and lose his marker, but this is something that can be improved given he's usually got a good positional awareness. He's also not a bad aerial defender despite his short stature, winning 50% of his aerial duels in the Eredivisie this season. So what can you expect at Manchester United? Expecting Ten Hag to deploy a 4-3-3 or a 4-2-3-1, Malassia will slot in at left back. He's very much in the mould of Daily Blind, a very good player in possession with a good passing range but one that doesn't constantly influence the attack in play. So with that in mind, expect him to operate in the defensive unit, either as a third centre-back in a back three or from central midfield in the double pivot, providing Ten Hag uses a similar structure from his last Ajax side. But don't expect to see that from the start. By the end of the season, I fully believe Tyrell Malassia could be first choice left-back, 
but the step up from the Eredivisie to the Premier League is big, so expect him to be given time to find his feet and acclimatise to the new country. In the meantime, Luke Shaw is a good deputy. Statistically, Shaw appears to be in the same search as Malassia on Instat when looking for ball-playing left-backs. He also plays his best football in a support role, and this new competition could bring the best out of the England international. That being said, Malassia will be a mainstay at Old Trafford for years to come under Eric Ten Hag. A combative, tactically intelligent and technically superb left-back signed at a cut price, it's very easy to see why Eric Ten Hag wanted the 22-year-old. But anyway guys, what do you think? Will Malassia be the first choice left-back at the start of the season? Let me know in the comments below. I've been Satman Dave. Subscribe if you're new. We'll see you later. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, why not check out some more content on the Statman Dave YouTube channel?